Did you know that in TDS, almost all of the towers in TDS are actually bald except for the engineer, medic, brawler, and cryomancer? Making it 42 towers that are actually bald. Now that I made you know this, it's kind of weird, right? Since we're talking about towers, there used to be a rumor around that told about the Kirby Accelerator. Which, as you can see from this Wikia Colors video, that there's this Kirby icon image in his loadout. It turned out to be just a placeholder image for the accelerator while it was in very early testing. Did you know that in the recent TDS trailer, they used the old scout model? And the model isn't even correct since it's missing glasses, headphones, and a scarf. Talking about models, did you know that the Accelerator and the TF2 Pyro are actually connected? Why? This is because the origin of their weapon models was the Gluon Gun from the Half-Life series, which is a game developed by Valve, the same people who made the game CSGO. What is your problem? Missile alone ramp! Missile alone ramp! On the topic of towers, when the Rocketeer was first added, it was actually misspelled as Rocketeer, which is kind of goofy. This one might blow your mind. Did you know that it costs 4,250 Robux to afford one single golden crate? Which is exactly 63.48 US dollars. It really shows the value of golden skins, but would you pay $63 for it? Here's something interesting that I bet you didn't think of at all. You know, you can actually beat TDS without moving your mouse even once. Go try it. It should be only a little bit of a challenge. The name Void Reaver is actually in short form. Its actual name is Vessel of Infinite Destruction Reaver. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna stick with the short form. Did you know that some trees are actually able to grow gold in real life? Now you know why the farm gets you so much money. Also, by the way, do you guys know that only 3.5% of you guys are actually subscribed to me? So if you're enjoying the video so far, it would actually help me a lot if you subbed. And also, it's completely free. Thank you for the support and I appreciate it. Since we were talking about the Void Reaver, the scream actually comes from Call of Duty Black Ops 2. The sound is just a little bit changed. Okay, this one might shock you, but believe it or not, did you know that the best tower you can get at level 1 is actually the War Machine? You might say, no, that's impossible. But it's actually true. This could happen by making a map, submit it, then you gotta wait to be accepted. But if you do, you can become a contributor and get the War Machine. So basically, you can get it for absolutely for free, just at the cost of your very hard work and luck. Did you know that the Hunter used to be a limited time code tower? The name for it was supposed to be originally called Clout God, which is a goofy name. But you can still see how the Hunter used to be a code tower by looking at the upgrade photo, which has a Twitter logo on its hat. Pretty nifty, huh? Did you know that TDS just reached 100,000 dislikes? Yeah! Just kidding. This one is not useless, but it was so interesting that I had to put in here. Did you know that the 2,000 coins bundle in the shop is the worst value among the four? For 1,000 coin bundle, you get 14.28 coins per one Robux. 2,500 coin bundle, you get 12.5 coins per one Robux. Then for the 5,000 coin bundle, you get 14.28 coins per one Robux. Then the last bundle, which is obviously the best value for your Robux, is 10,000 coin bundle, which you get 15.38 coins per Robux. But I think the best bundle is no bundle at all. Save your money for some lunch instead. Did you know the famous YouTuber Markiplier actually played TDS at one point? He was actually playing with a few of his friends until Below Natural raided his stream, which he didn't seem too happy about. On the topic of YouTubers, did you know that Lugwig, also a very popular content creator, listened to the old Nuclear Fallen King OST? And he actually liked it a lot. This is a Roblox game. Another cool fact about the OST for Nuclear Fallen King is that it's the most popular soundtrack in the game with over 3 million views. And since we're on the topic of music, the Solar Eclipse event has the most OSTs with 10 soundtracks in total. When TDS released the Lunar Overture update, where there was a giant battle pass, a few towers that were added, and 3 acts, which are maps that you had to complete in order to beat the event, never got an official trailer. Which is a surprise because every time a skin pack was released, they made a trailer for that. And never for this giant update. 
only a few soundtracks, which were posted on their official TDS YouTube channel. Did you know that TDS was actually a school project from Below Natural? Now it's a game with 3.4 billion visits, 3 million favorites, 20,000 active players, and 1 million likes. I guess success can come out of nowhere. The mecha base, which is an admin tower, used to have a medic icon and stats that said reminder to remake stats, which is pretty interesting. And I wonder if that rework ever happened. Did you know that at some point in TDS, the military base could actually kill flying type zombies? Even though it was a road type vehicle, this only occurred in the old Wrecked Battlefield, which where the military base would reach and kill zombies on the bridge. Talk about flying, did you know that in TDS that the Pursuit and Ace Pilot were actually not the first flying towers? The first ever tower that was able to fly was actually the Minigunner, which I bet you didn't expect that. Considered as one of the oldest towers in the game, the Minigunner was a tower that existed in the pre-alpha stages of Tower Defense Simulator. And as you can see here, on its old design, it was flying due to its jetpacks when you got at max level. Did you know that DJ stats have not been changed since October 29th, 2020, which is the overhaul update. This update was the re-release of Hardcore Beta, which is almost 4 years ago. Now, about the skins on TDS. The skins Valhalla and Pirate Mortar share the same Wario laugh sound effect. which is a character in Nintendo's most popular game, Super Mario. The Tower Militant is actually the first ever tower to have a reloading system, which makes it unique from every other tower. The Frost Invasion event, which is a 2021 TDS event, is the longest event in TDS's history. The event lasted from May 8th, 2021 to the 4th of December, 2021, making the event 7 months long. The funny part is that even during summer, the frost event was still going on. Since we talked about the longest, might as well talk about the shortest event as well. The shortest TDS event is actually the Metaverse Champions event, which lasted 7 days. It was definitely one of the strangest events for sure. In the TDS lobby, the survival mode statue, which is the minigunner tower, uses the older version of the model, as you can see here. One has a bulletproof vest, and the other doesn't. Did you know that on the VIP map selection, there's actually two maps that are not available on the computer, but are actually playable if you are lucky enough to get it on your map pool. The two maps are Construction Crazy and Abyssal Trench. So if you are trying to play one of those two maps, or both of them, I wish you luck. I swear this is the last one about Void Reaver. But did you know that Void Reaver's arms are actually two different colors? One of them is pink and the other is black. This basically means he has two skin tones, right? On the map Abyssal Trench, there's this mysterious cube that no one knows what it's for. And it's located on the bottom of the ravine. Let me know in the comments if you know. The turret skin, XR500, is the only skin left that uses the old skin tone from TDS and also the old faces. The Raider and the Hand were the only two bosses that were able to kill towers. These two bosses were only spawnable due to their respective events. The Raider from the Area 51 event and the Hands from the Lunar Overture update. Did you know that TDS actually has its own lore? In summary, the towers are being led by Commander, which we try to protect civilizations from the Fallen King's army. And then there's the Umbra, who is the main villain of the TDS lore, which she is preparing for her return along with Lord Exo. If you want more in-depth lore, I suggest checking out Bomb Bomb Carrot's YouTube channel. His videos are very informative and definitely worth the watch. Since I brought up the Umbra, did you know that the Solar Eclipse event was the first event to have an enemy shown to have a gender? Which, as you can see, the Umbra turns out to be a female. Even though Tower Defense Simulator was created on June 5th, 2019, it was not released to the public until 10 days later. John Roblox used to have a tower that was named after him, and that was the only tower that was ever named after someone. That tower is now known as the Militant. Did you know that TDS used to have a game mode that lasts 65 waves in one game? It used to take about 1 hour and 15 minutes to beat it. Nowadays, people could beat a game mode in under 10 minutes, which is a giant difference from before. Back in the early days of TDS, there used to be this mysterious door in the lobby, and it was actually once open and caught on video. No one really knows what it was for, but it seemed like some sort of troll by Razotex. And that was 10 minutes of useless information in TDS. If you want to watch some TDS myths, watch this video. 